Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich is going to show you four techniques to make this beautiful bouquet. So gear up and let's get started. The links to the drawing and the brushes and paints are listed in the description below. You will have drawn the circles and those are to preserve the white of the paper. So tip number one, coat your old, old brush in a little bit of soap and then you are going to paint these circles, the flowers and the stems with the masking fluid. Instead of using a brush, you can also use a silicone brush or a plastic brush. They are a lot easier to clean, so it might be a good idea to invest in something like that. Masking fluid can be somewhat fickle, so it's a good idea to maybe pour a little bit into the lid or into a small container and use it from there. You could also, if you find that it, it, it had become thick, add a tiny drop of water, very little water to it, to thin it out again and it will be perfectly usable. You might want to soften the pencil lines before you start painting because it's very difficult to remove the pencil lines after the paint or even the masking fluid had dried. So if you don't want to see the pencil lines on your drawing, use a kneadable eraser and just roll it over your drawing to lift out some of the darker pencil lines. That would help a lot. And also remember that when you remove the masking fluid, it would probably remove your drawing as well. So take care with that. You can also splatter some of the masking fluid to create the very small bokeh circles. And uh, splattering masking fluid is actually a wonderful idea if you have a snowy landscape or where you just want to have small white patches on the paper. Let the masking fluid dry naturally. A hair dryer is a bad idea when you have masking fluid on your paper. When you are sure that the masking fluid is dry, it takes about an hour to be very, very sure. Then you can keep your paper flat and wet it all over. Make sure that the water is spread evenly and that there are no puddles or dry patches that will hinder the paint from moving properly. There are a whole lot of colors on the palette. So we have Nickel Azo Yellow, Maroon Brown, Perylene Maroon, Quin Gold Deep, Sap Green and Perylene Green. So he's using the Silver Black Velvet number 12 and he started off with a Nickel Azo Yellow by Core to start the background. Now he's adding the Maroon Brown from Schmincke and just randomly dotting in, spreading in the colors to create the background. The next one is Perylene Maroon by Winsor & Newton and that gives a little bit of contrast to the brownish colors. And then of course Quin Gold Deep by Cor, a magical color that spreads beautifully. He adds the sap green to start to create the background for the stems of the flowers. And these are added quite randomly, but kind of in the shape of the stems and the greens that are growing on the, uh, in the foreground. So sap green first and then perylene green to create the shadows or the darker areas. These flowers are going to be white. So it's a good idea to surround them with darker colors because then they are going to stand out a whole lot more. So notice that he is pulling down the greens all over the stems and creating additional stems for the background. Now they all will fade out once they are dry. So you can use a quite a strong pigment to start drawing in these stems and twigs and grasses that you will have in the background. You can keep adding the colors that you have on your palette randomly to fill up the background and to create the contrast and the interest and texture at the back. Mm -hmm. 
So let your painting dry naturally. Preferably don't use a hairdryer. It blows the paint everywhere if you're not careful. So now he's going to remove the masking fluid and is using a rubber cement eraser. And that is a very useful tool. You don't rub on the paper, you basically just loosen the masking fluid and then you can pull it off with, with your fingers if you want to. Um, the eraser is really very, very good at removing all the masking fluid. Wipe your hand over the paper to make sure that there's no residue left and then you are ready for the next step. Okay, so here is tip number two. You are going to use the stencil brushes. And in the first place, you are going to use the stencil brush to soften the hard edges that were left by the masking fluid. That is one unfortunate thing about masking fluid. It can sometimes leave hard edges where you've used it. So you can use the stencil brush to just add a little bit of water to the circle and then dab it out. That will help you to soften the edges. Heinrich will demonstrate again a little bit later on in the video how to use the stencil brushes to create the actual bouquet effect. But for now, he's just using them to soften all the edges that were left by the masking fluid. The masking fluid helped to preserve the very white of the paper and that will give a nice contrast when you start making the other bouquet circles because they are not all white, they have different colors and we'll show you how that works. Tip number three is using a magic sponge and a stencil. Now the magic sponge is a very cheap kind of sponge so you can cut it smaller if you need to and then dip it in clean water use a separate container and then squeeze out the excess water put the stencil on the paper where you want the circle to be and then gently rub with the magic sponge and dab out the excess water be very careful that the sponge is not too wet because then the water will seep underneath the stencil and cause a drama. So the harder you press, the whiter the circle will be because you will lift more paint. The softer you work, or if you just dab, then you will just lift the top layers of the paint. And that is actually wonderful because you are getting different shades and different depths of the circles or of the bouquet effect. Make sure that you dry the areas where the stencil had been because it will seep through. You can make your circles on top of each other. They can touch each other. It is a good idea. They are never separate. You will have to link them in a way so that they kind of fit together and give that blurry effect. Now what is nice about the stencil is that you can easily make circles of different sizes. But like I said, be very careful with the water flow. Also remember when you dab with the towel, the paper towel to, to remove the excess water, that you use a clean part of the towel every time because the towel can also transfer paint from one area to the next, if you are not careful. It sounds like watercolor is hard work, but it is so much fun. And making these circles, it's quite time consuming, but it is so satisfying to see this whole thing come together. Okay. 
and we're back to tip number two where we had the stencil brush and here is using the Rubens stencil brush that we have it's a fairly soft brush and um, this is a very small one so you can make very small circles with it and because the brush's hairs are not very hard they um, you don't have to press so hard and it just lifts the top layer of the paint and you can see there that you are, you can make circles of various depth and that creates the different colors so move the stencil brush in a circular motion and lift off the paint the harder you press the more paint you're going to lift but be careful that you do not damage the paper dab out every time so you dip the brush in the water and dry it off a little bit it shouldn't be soaking it should just be damp then make the circular movements on the paper and dab out with the tissue to remove the excess water make your circles all over the paper but again remember less is more don't make too many right and here we are with tip number four and this is a very interesting one you can also make the bouquet circles by using a paintbrush now you have to get the paint on the brush very watery mix and then move the brush in a circular motion so that you can create a circle and dab out the excess paint he started off with a Dela Rowney brush but it was an old brush and it didn't work very well the hairs were all over the place so he moved over to the heron and the heron seems to be working very very well so get your paint watery mix and paint in a circular motion just like that and then once you're done you dab it out with a towel He's using the paints or the colors that he used originally in the background just to paint in a few more circles just to give a little bit of interest and variation in the background in the bouquet. If you want the circles to be darker, you don't dab them out. If you want them to be lighter, you dab them out. Now you can let your painting dry naturally again. The colors on the palette for the flowers are Antwerp Blue, Maroon Brown, Nicolazo Yellow, Quin Gold Deep and Van Dyke Brown. He's starting with a Nicolazo Yellow to paint the little yellow hearts of the flowers. Very daintily in the center of the flower. Then he's going to add quinacridone gold deep to the bottom part to start creating the shadows and the definition in the heart of the flower. Very, very gently, just a drop because it will spread and then it will ruin your flower's heart like what happened there. You have to be really, really very gentle, only the tip of your brush. Then next, Van Dyke Brown to add the final shadow part to the heart.
and now he's going to use the sap green to start painting in the stems. Now remember that you used masking fluid on the stems and that was to preserve some of the white of the stems so that they can serve as the light reflection showing the light in your stems and in your painting. So when you do paint the stems only paint them on the one side so that the other side in this case the left hand side can stay white and then be the highlight of the stems. He's using the perylene green to add a little bit of shadow and texture to each of the stems. Use a very thin brush or a fine pointed brush and just put the shadow on the one side, very gently pulling it through. By preserving the white on the left hand side and then layering it from the light sap green to the darker shadow green or perylene green, you have created a beautiful texture and definition in your stems. Now he's using a little bit of Van Dyke to enhance the shadow side. And it's time to start painting in the little twigs and branches and grasses in the background. He started off with a Van Dyke and he's loosely following the pencil lines that he's made originally. He's making a little bit of a stronger mix of the sap green and now he's going to paint in the leaves and there's no real texture to it. He basically just pulls them out because it's wildflowers and the leaves are usually just very random, curly, not straight. So he's just adding the leaves and some more grass with the thin tipped brush and the green.
The next thing that we are going to do is paint in the shadowy parts of the white flowers. They can't just stay like that. They need some shadow and definition. So with a watery, watery mix of Antwerp blue, he is now painting in the shadows of the flowers all around the edges and creating beautiful definition in each of the flowers. He's adding a touch of indigo to the Antwerp just to make it a little bit darker to paint in the darker shadows in between the petals. And this is kind of a negative painting technique where you preserve the white and just paint the shadows to highlight your object to make it stand out. The color mixes of this painting are actually the stars of the painting. The Antwerp and indigo giving the flowers their texture and definition. And here indigo and Van Dyke brown mix to add some more shadow and definition and texture to the stems.
This is a patch of wild nature field. So add your stems and your grasses randomly and freely. It really gives that feeling of being out in nature. Adding some more grasses, some more definition. And then of course, the splattering. This time is using the Van Dyke Brown and Indigo mix to add some splattering and some definition and texture and interest to the grasses, the little seed pots, and is painting it in with the side of the brush. Now he's going to use some quinacridone gold to make some more flowers in the background. And these flowers have no real definition. They are just there to fill out the background. So you literally just dab them in. You can use the tip of the brush or the sides of the brush and just make a kind of a, like a hand with fingers type of thing. And just dab in the little flowers that you want to put in there. is using the Van Dyke Indigo mix again, just to give a little bit of shadow and definition to those little flowers at the back. And it's interesting the, how the, the Quinn Gold and the Indigo kind of work together. You can't actually think it would, but it does. It works so well together. And of course, a little bit of splattering goes a long way. So he's using that same mix and he's splattering in some grass grains and seeds. This is a loose painting, so they don't have to be very realistic. It's just the idea of seeds on the tips of the grasses. So he's splattering them in very, very gently. Hold your brush perpendicular to the page and then just tap lightly. So now he's going to use white gouache. And uh, he's using permanent white gouache from Windsor and Newton to splatter in a few white dots. 
And that's also just to enhance the bouquet effect, but to create the idea of some little white flowers, Queen Anne lace, something like that. And I'm just splattering it randomly. The permanent white gouache works a little bit better than the zinc white because it stays where you put it. The zinc white tends to fade into the paper. The permanent white does not do that. You might want to keep your gouache in a separate container away from the rest of your paints because it's very opaque and um, it will contaminate your other uh, paints. It will really influence the transparency of your paints. So keep it separate and also if you rinse your brush, rinse it in a separate container because the opaqueness will go into your water and if you rinse your brush from other colors, it is going to make a mess. So basic idea, keep it separate. Adding a little bit of detail just to give some highlights. And now you can sign your painting. That's always a good idea because it's yours. Removing the tape and this gives you a beautiful white border. So it gives it a really good finished look. And there you have it. Thank you so very much for joining us on our watercolor journey. We really hope to see you very, very soon. Happy painting.